So let's move on to the next module, which is the mind module. So this is what I uh, hinted at before. So really working with distressed and distressing people is going to be distressing for us. It is distressing for us. So Norcross, who is a wonderful researcher in uh, all fields, in, in the psychotherapy field, in all aspects of it, but he's really been focusing in the last, you know, uh, this is from 2000, but certainly in the last um, 10 to 12 years on uh, well-being and self-care for therapists. And he's saying anticipate and expect fatigue because it's bound to happen. It can't not happen. And he's saying think of strategies, which is what we're looking at, broad brush strokes, not a particular technique or a method. So the quote here is effective self-change is characterized by a complex differential pattern of change strategies. And Prochaska and Di Clemente, people, you may be aware of them, they've done a lot of work in terms of um, the stages of change, particularly in addiction. Um, so there are five stages that they've identified. And so Norcross is quoted, quoting Prochaska and Di Clemente because there are stages of self-change in our self-care program too. You know? Can you say a little more about this distinction between strategies versus techniques and methods, because I don't think I'm quite yeah. clear on that. So a strategy might be broad brush, brush strokes, like what we're looking at here. Look at your mind, emotions, mind, sorry, body, mind, emotions, um, spirit and shadow, or uh, yeah, shadow and um, look at those those core things for yourself. They're strategies, like I want to focus on my spiritual well-being in a particular way, mm -hmm. and then... Um, Within that, then you can think, okay, where am I now? What might work for me? Because that's a particular technique. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And another one would be, for example, in exercise, your strategy would be to get 20 minutes exercise a day, right? Rather than saying, I'm going to walk for 20 minutes every day. Uh -huh. Because if you can't walk and you're stuck on that technique, then you've lost your exercise. But gotcha. you have a strategy. Yeah, okay. Right. So you can actually, you know, do jumping jacks inside or push-ups or crunches right, or something right. like that. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah, that helps. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, and again, the cross-training is really stressed because one particular skill is not enough. So that's why, you know, doing your own therapy or your own supervision isn't enough or having your own, going to your own sp uh, spiritual advisor <coughs> isn't enough. We, we need um, a broad range. Okay. And... Again, keeping ourselves in the mind, continually stimulated, learning about the changes in our own field of, you know, whatever you're involved with, with your own caring of others, what that entails. There's always new, new literature, new approaches coming out, new information, but also being aware of changes in other fields that might be applicable to our own or just generally keeping abreast of something else. If you're learning something new, that's keeping your mind stimulated and uh, challenged. Um, so again, what I'd mentioned before was self-awareness and self-monitoring, so keeping track of what we're actually doing too, because if we don't keep track, we don't know. Like with those changeable, you know, pick one uh, thing that you're going to try for each of the four modules or the five modules, if you're not tracking what you're doing, how are you going to remember that you've actually drunk one and a half litres of water or that you've exercised for 20 minutes three times a week? You know, because our mind will forget. So uh, tracking is important. And that's just basic coaching uh, methodology, you know, having, having some way of keeping track, a diary, what have you, having a buddy that you're doing the exercise or the diet intervention with so that you're accountable to somebody else, and that's uh, the tracking. Uh, and again, prevention, early intervention is the key because it can make our impairment or the precursor to an impairment a brief and minor one and quickly restore us to the well-functioning state. So if we're aware, for example, that we're tired one night and we don't pay attention and the next day and the next night we're still tired but, you know, we've decided that or we've signed up for a seminar or we've decided that we're going to go and meet X and we do it anyway despite being tired, we're not listening to those early warning signals. And so if we don't listen to the whispers, we're going to hear the shouts. Yeah. It's going to catch up. 
Um, so again, what <coughs> keeps the mind active is diversifying what we do, how we do it, who we do it with. You know, so keep talking amongst yourselves in your own congregation about what you're doing uh, so in your own community, what you what you're doing, how you could keep tweaking. You know, your ideas about um, you know how you're dealing with you, your congregants, um, keeping in connection, which I, I'm assuming from Tim you do a fair bit of, you know, and you spark ideas. You know, somebody, you know, says something, oh, I hadn't thought about that. What about trying that? And so you're keeping yourself um, active and bringing diverse, diversity into what you're doing and how you're doing it. And in terms of the environment, often we're just unaware how environment impacts us. So if we're in a room or we're cramped on a desk or we you know our chair isn't working for us or there's not enough natural light or um, you know we we don't have uh, enough time for the people who are coming to us with their demands that's all part of our environment and it's gonna impact our how we feel in terms of our well functioning um, a big one here is to clarify, as carers, the philosophy of what we're actually doing in life. Like, why are we doing what we're doing? Why are you part of the AJC? And what does it mean for you? And then, what is your own philosophy for yourself in terms of how you fit into that wider philosophy of life? Um, why is it, uh, say, in terms of self-care, how does that fit into being a member of a spiritual community. Why does it fit in? Does it fit in? And how would it, or what does it mean for me? Where am I with it in my own process? So clarifying those ideas for ourselves. And what Wilbur talks about in terms of uh, our cognition, it's, it's really sharpening and expanding our cognition, the way we think, what we're cognizant of, what we are aware of, and how we understand caring and and that takes into account our own interior what we're aware of in our own interiors our own bodies minds emotions as well as what we're aware of outside of us in our environment in our communities in our you know the broader concept of what we're doing and why we're doing it um, and uh, because, uh, so Tim's probably touched on this yesterday already with uh, Wilbur's uh, perspectives, taking the I perspective, when we're dealing with, say, for example, self-care, how does it impact me, the we perspective, how are we doing this, and it, what is self-care in general, and how do we constitute that, what does it mean for us as the AJC. So that's what this next exercise is about. And so I don't know, um, rather than breaking up into pairs, I'm wondering whether this might be best as a call-out thing, you know, like uh, in terms of uh, the I perspective. Is, is everyone okay with doing it as calling out so that you can feed off each other's ideas? So what do you do? What have you done? And what would you like to do regarding self-care in general? We've only covered one module but we're exercising the mind module in this.